oh. and something to do that day. Okay. It's go oh let's go find where the the good vegetarian food or the good a good juice or a good smoothie or something like that. But we're in yep. Idaho somewhere. <coughs> Which brings me Maybe what I was going to say. Not going to be the most obvious. Okay. It's not going to be so obvious. So it ends up being like a bit of a game <coughs> or something just to, you know, you just find things to take you off the bus on your own. You know, yeah. find your own time and, and and try and exercise stuff like that. You know. Yeah. Which brings me to what I was just thinking about before. I was taking the bins out. I'm here at this yeah. um, the shop here, taking the bin out. I love it here actually, really do. And um, and I thought about a story I also tell other people is that when back in and we're in high school, I remember you blowing my mind with this one thing you said that was like so out of the side that. But it, but now that you're doing what you're doing now, is uh, is is pretty cool. It's like you saw the future. So we're only not 14 or something and they're constantly asking or not asking, what are you going to do with your life? And still don't know, like, you know, really. Mm, and get, and yeah. never even, I never even thought of um, uh, at the time a band, like I never thought that was real, especially when my old man, like starting to make money in a, in a, in a business. Yep. So it sort of spins my, spun my mind at the time. So I remember. It, but you said this. Oh, I'm going to take, uh, you know, pictures of like porn chicks and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you were legit. You were talking about something so national, so international. You were uh, talking about taking, f- like, being a photographer for. Like, for Playboy new- magazine. Yeah, and, like and Hustler and stuff. Right. But I remember, I was like, what, what, wow. Like, and I still remember it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You've, but what I mean now is I'm going up, taking the bin out this morning, thinking. You've done what you wanted to do with your life. You're actually touring the world in a band. And, and I don't remember you ever going, no, I'm going to uh, follow this network marketing career. Get my uh, portfolio together yeah. and um, yeah. check on my share. You've, and... you've stuck with something and known, uh, known how to you know, stay in it. You've, we've all gone off the rails places and, yes. and got, gotten back. Definitely have. Definitely. It's been a wild ride, as you know. I've told you some stories and stuff like that but I remember we were in high school in grade 10 and they were working out we were sending us into workplace it's called work experience back then you'd go for two weeks and work somewhere as a student and you, you're picking your career basically and you you were sitting next to me and I, you said what are you going to do after school and I was like I'm going to be a rock star I'm going to play a band yeah I remember and I said, what are you going to do? And you said, I don't know, race cars, which you did. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, did I say that? Yeah, right. You did. Yeah, I remember claiming that. Yeah, and I, I just, I think we just went off and did it, which was the whole thing about our band back then. We just, yeah. I remember, you know, we won the Rock Queensland Rock Awards. We just did it. It wasn't like, yeah. I don't know, we were very do- DIY back then. Yeah. You know, we just did everything ourselves. We recorded our first album ourselves. We built the recording studio under the, your parents' house. Yeah. Um, hey, when who's who's playing bass on the the Cult record? Uh, the new one. Mm. It's Chris Cheney from Jane's Addiction. Oh, wow, it spins me out that he's got the same name as Chris Cheney from um, the, the Living, Living End. End. No, I always have to double check. I think it's spelt differently. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I realised that recently. It's Cheney and Cheney. I think. Man, you know how you did. Um, uh, you played on at the AFL Grand Final with Susie Demarchi, didn't you? Did you not? The, some sort of Melbourne Grand Final or something? It was it was the Mushroom Records 25th anniversary concert okay. in 1998. Right. With Nuno Nuno played on yeah. stage with us. Nuno was married to Susie at the time. Mick Easterman, who I've had on this podcast show. Mick played drums. And, yeah. And the amazing Dave Leslie on guitar. That's right. So half of... Um, a little bit of an extreme, half of uh, baby <laughs> animals, and a little bit of cluster smith, like um, bull rush. Yeah, right. I know. Anyway, the reason I ask that is if you want to see something uh, great, you know, you wouldn't. There's so many millions of questions I'd ask you, mate. But okay, big ridiculous setup like that. You're in the middle of a football field. Say it might be different for you because it was a proper stadium stage. But there's a distance away from people, right? Like a ridiculous distance away from people to feel you disconnected. And that was a good one because yeah. Susie had just gone solo at that point. 
she had a solo album out, but and we only played people were only doing two songs each kind of thing. And the stage revolved around we faced the audience and no one really knew who we were. Yeah. They didn't say anything about the baby animals. It was Susie DeMarkey. But then as soon as we played Sorry, As soon as we started playing, they heard the first chords to Rush You from Baby Animals. The crowd just erupted and you could literally feel the vibration of the... It was like 80,000 people. It was incredible, incredible experience. But it was two songs so it was like... It just happened. Right, right. Just, I was up there one minute and then... It, yep. Why I asked you that about the mushroom thing, if you want to see something really cool from Chris Cheney with The Living Hen, they just... I don't follow AFL football, Australian rules football, but um, uh, the Living End just did like uh, Prisoner of Society in front of – in a ridiculous setup, in the middle of the field, away from everyone. Mm-hmm. You've got to see it, man. It's uh, – uh, I've got goose on thinking now. It's like they – you know, it's such a great guitar playing song and, and stand-up double bass and I'm, I'm saying it for a reason. It's amazing. I'll check Big it out. Big Gretsch guitar – but he's actually compressed the sound and he's, it's such good guitar playing. Uh, I'm not the only one saying that, but it's in, because of you do stadium stuff now, big things, they did it without the um, – uh, I imagine my mind, I'd overplay, like big movements and wah, wah, wah. They were still doing that, but it was like the playing was so contained. Mm. I can imagine someone as technical or as smart as Billy Duffy would be the same as well. Like, oh, fuck all these geese. You know, like mm. the, the song's still contained because you got used to this stadium stuff. Playing on the big stages, is, it, it really um, – the band got a lot better fast doing those big stages this year. It was an amazing experience. And, yeah, that happened to me the first couple of shows I went out and just – like over, perf- I think over perform, not overplayed, but just like, yeah, I can imagine. I had such a bang over, like because I just, oh, I got to ent- entertain all these people. So, I, and then we did about eleven shows with them on those big stages, and by the end, it would just, it was a lot more contained, yeah. and relaxed. I think there was a lot of nervous energy the first right. one, but what happens on stage with sound? Is it all in ear monitor stuff? Or not for us? A lot of bands do that now. A lot yeah. of guys don't have, like, say, Guns N' Roses. What they do is the amps are um, in an isolation box yep. backstage. Wow. Like, you know where all the crew and the yep. cables are right back there behind yep. the drum kit. There's, like, there are cases and the amps inside yep. with a mic. Right. I've, seen, I've seen you photos. You've sent me photos of right. Slash's setup, perhaps. Yeah. I don't know if I saw his, but I... Yeah. I, I talked at length with his tech he was a, a great guy and very open about information and what, how they do it and stuff and um we also do, do a lot of shows with Alice and Chains Jerry Cantrell and Billy are really good mates and um they've they've gone that way now too and I was talking to them about it they do the same thing so when you stand side of stage and watch them there's no amps on stage yeah. you really just hear drums and vocals Weird. because the the guitars are back Behind the monitor guy, Weird, off the side of the stage yep. in a case with a mic. It doesn't have to be and too just, loud. They're yeah. just feeding all. It's an in ear. Yeah, so it's a mix. Like, so there's none of that. You know that low end rumble that comes out of those Marshall cabs. Yeah. And, you know, it's like you're playing guitar, but there's this. Yeah, and, then yeah, a, yeah. and then a bass cab. Yeah. And then you got Tom drums, and it's. Yeah. It kind of it messes with you. Yeah. So it. it but it is weird. A lot of guys are doing that now. They just isolate the the cab. Mic it and it's all in here, but we do it the other. We do it old school. Cool. I wear um, protection, hearing, hearing protection, like filters. Oh yeah. It's a mold with a 15 dB sound decrease filter in it, and that's changed my life. But um, Ian and our drummer use in ears. Yeah. Billy's old school. He's got all. We have all the amps on stage. Yeah. It's um, and it's loud. Right. But it sounds great. He's got a yeah. great, you know. The, Great tone. It's not like a. Right. It's a natural guitar sound, if you know what I mean. There's not a lot of, um, like the guitar in the amp just sounds great with both our guitar players. If you know what I mean. We, yeah. They if have, you're a good guitar player, which is kind of what I'm saying. Yeah, and they in. they have great guitars, yeah. and great amps. Yep. And it just you can just plug their guitars in it and it sounds great straight away. Billy has a couple of pedals and stuff that he likes to use, but they're 
pretty standard and you know right, just to affect that out that song on the track yeah well you know he's got a couple of signature effects like you know she sells sanctuary is that chorus right. sound and he's wah wah and stuff like that but generally it's just that roland jc 120 remember those amps yep. the jazz chorus yep that's that sound and then he's i think he's using friedman heads with these orange cabinets and then he's got a vox in there just to mix it up a little bit an ac30 and it's it's a it's a good combination of things that make one big sound what are you what are you playing and i have him coming at me through my monitors like screeching so you know i have it it's loud it me coming at me yeah so um what's your setup because i lock in with billy's right hand because it's a lot of together so um I'm just I'm using Fender gear now. I've used Ampeg for a long time and other Mesa Boogie and stuff like that. But I'm I'm using these Fender basement rigs. Um, amazing, yeah. amazing. Swear by it. Even when I do little gigs, I use the little Fender Rumble 500 watt amp. I do rock gigs with these things, man. They're, yeah, they're amazing. Wow. Yeah. Do you still have to pull into the sh- like the music shop Friday Guitar once a Center. year <laughs> and like buy your strings? Like what happens? Do you have a, Not lately. a, a permanent tech? Did, you, did they change bass strings every show? I am at the moment. Yeah, but we didn't back in the day. It, no, we, sometimes you know. I do it every second show. But yeah, we have a, um, we have guys doing that for us. And you know, Billy's endorsed by Ernie Ball, all these you know Dunlop. Um, so through Billy, I've met some of these guys, and Ernie okay. Ball just give me strings now. He's a real dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ernie Ball? Yeah. I've never met him. I don't to, know. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. No, like, I mean, the, the company just, I see. yeah, yeah their yeah. rep just sends us, right. you know, we just, one of the techs just asks. I was expecting Ernie. It's kind of done through the techs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I can see him with a plaid orange sort of suit. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie Ball. Like, <laughs> g'day, chaps. <laughs> this is great. Do you still have that Yamaha amp? Yeah, man. And that, and that Les Paul? Uh, no. That Les Paul copy. I can't the even vantage? remember where it went. Yeah, the Vantage. I think I gave it to someone. I do not even Thanks remember. A lot. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that I don't a great, know. But the, a great the, setup. Man, the Yamaha amp, I think I used it recently for something. Like I still have that little black bass amp. Do you? That I bought of Joel Burdett. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was in the shed for a yeah. oh, mate. <laughs> what about the blue, um, even the bass amp? Did you still keep that? No, the bass guitar, the got blue it. one. Broken neck. It. No, I've got it. Yeah. It's good. Um, yeah. The SG. Yeah, yeah. It's good, mate. It's like hanging on to old girlfriends or something, you know. Like, you know. oh, if only people knew. <laughs> the times that was pissed on. Yeah, I've lost a lot of guitars over the years, but um, yeah. Well, mate, put it there. It's been an hour. Oh, we don't have to that end straight away. Yeah, tell me about playing with Bill Burr. He's one of my favourite uh, comedians. I listen to his podcast show all the time. And then and he he mentioned you as a good podcast, story? and I nearly just jumped out the window. Really humble guy, just super down to earth, just. Like he is. Right, yeah. He's, there's no act there. It's Boston kind of. Huh? Boston kind yeah, of. Yeah, like he's. No bullshit sort of. Yeah, thing. he's got that dry East Coast thing. Yeah. Uh, I think he's hilarious. But um, yeah, he's the, that other guy that I work with, Frankie Perez in LA and um, Vegas. Um, they're just friends, I guess. Right. And well, uh, he just invited him down. You want to come down and play drums? Yeah. And he did. And he's just, you know, it who's, was fun. Who's the guy that was in. Um, uh, you definitely have. Work with him a heap. Uh, the guy that was in, what was that band? Oh, God. After Guns N' Roses. I can't think of him. Velvet Revolver. Yes. Dave Kushner. Dave Kushner. Yeah. Dave Kushner was in that band, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't he there that day? Kush. He invited, because Dave Kushner um, made the music for Bill Burr's new. Uh, he is. You're right. Yes. Yeah, F for Family show. Dave is doing that yeah. music. And the reason I like um, Bill Burr's podcast is because he's constantly trying to learn, like, drums. Like, and he'll get lessons here and there and he's like, to do the, the, the single toe tap for Immigrant, immigrant, song, immigrant song, you know, right, and yeah. gave him, like, plantar fasciitis or something. He's, he's yeah, right. Oh, right, right, You know what right, I mean? Like, yeah. um, someone constantly working on uh, he was actually, trying to be a drummer. And now he's – and he did a gig with you. That just blew my head. He was – Super respectful. He was just like, oh, man, you guys are like, you know, real musicians or whatever. He, he, I think he was a little nervous, but he played great. Right. Did you yeah, see cool. the footage? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great. Yeah, good. It was great. It was, that was a lot of fun. 
That was a lot of fun, man. So what happens in Australia now? You, um, you